Don't indulge yourself when you're just a housewife. Who do you think is supporting you so that you can live like this? You're just at home and not doing anything every day. Don't you know the saying, he who does not work shall not eat? Despite quitting my job at my husband's request and becoming a full-time housewife, he barely gives me any living expenses and won't let me work. Aggressive and domineering, he would belittle people and laugh at them. This was my husband's true nature. I can divorce you any time I want. You probably can't make it on your own as a full-time housewife with nothing to offer, but if you serve me well, I'll let you stay in this house. Aren't I a nice guy? Show some gratitude. Usually, I would say, you're right. Thanks to you. I appreciate your hard work. There was no falsehood in those words of gratitude. I had faint hope that we would one day respect each other. But now, I've reached my limit. I'm going to indulge myself. What? I'll divorce you and make money on my own to indulge myself. What are you talking about? Now, I'll show him my true nature. My name is Nancy, and I'm a soon-to-be 30-year-old housewife. I've loved clothes and drawing them since I was a child. I would often draw clothes I wanted to wear when I grew up on the drawing paper my mother bought me. Whenever I was asked about my future dreams in elementary school, I would say I wanted to be a fashion designer. After graduating from a fashion design vocational school, I worked at a general company. Of course, I had hoped to work for a fashion design company to make use of what I learned at school, but it seemed I had no luck at that time as I unfortunately failed the final interview. Lacking the courage to try again, I ended up working for a company unrelated to fashion design. Around the time I got used to working as an office worker, I met my current husband Darren who was in sales. I was in administration so I didn't have much direct contact with the sales department, but we happened to sit next to each other at the company's year-end party, which was the start of our relationship. From then on, whenever we passed each other in the company, we'd exchange a few words and gradually became closer. Eventually, after going out to eat several times, he asked me to date him. About a year after we started dating, he proposed and we decided to get married. Now we live together in a rented apartment, just the two of us. We don't have any children. I thought having children would be fun, but he doesn't like kids. I can't force him, so there's nothing I can do about it. My friends often tell me that if I want kids, I should leave him, but I'd rather be with him even without kids. I loved his straightforward personality with a touch of kindness. However, about a year after we got married, he changed. I quit my job and became a full-time housewife right after we got married because he strongly wished for it. His mother, my mother-in-law, was a successful career woman, but he didn't seem to like that. It appears that coming home from school to an empty house during his childhood still casts a shadow on his heart, and he wanted me to be at home to welcome him after work. I didn't have any particular dislikes to becoming a full-time housewife because my mother was one. On the other hand, I had started to find my job rewarding even though the company I joined wasn't my first choice and it was hard to leave. But I understood how he felt. Coming home tired to an empty house must be lonely. I didn't want to make him feel that way since I loved him. So I quit my job and became a full-time housewife. And about a year after becoming a housewife, his behavior suddenly changed one day. Hey Nancy, you're a housewife so don't waste the money I earn. What's gotten into you? I'm not wasting money. I genuinely didn't know what he was talking about so I responded that way and he raised his voice. Don't talk back. You're just a housewife. Who do you think is supporting you so that you can live like this? You're just sitting at home all day and not doing anything. 
Don't you even think about being useful to me? Don't you know the proverb, he who does not work shall not eat? At that time, I thought he was just in a bad mood, so I said, I'm sorry. It's all thanks to you to calm him down. But that was a mistake. Whether he got a taste for it or it became a habit, he kept verbally abusing me day after day. Along with that, he started giving me very little living expenses. This is all I get for this month's living expenses? We can't live on this. Don't complain. Just don't waste money. If you want to waste money, do it on your own. I can divorce you anytime I want. You probably can't make it on your own as a full-time housewife with nothing to offer, but if you serve me well, I'll let you stay in this house. Aren't I a nice guy? Show some gratitude. He became aggressive, a completely different person from a year ago. He never used to say things like that. I wonder what happened. Could it be that this was his true nature from the beginning? Why do you say such terrible things? Becoming a full-time housewife was your wish in the first place. Is money tight? If so, I can work part-time. If you don't like coming home to an empty house, I'll make sure I'm back before you are. When I said that, he laughed mockingly. You're too slow to work and be a housewife at the same time. It's absolutely not allowed because housework will be neglected. You should just stay at home and quietly do housework. After that, we had the same kind of exchanges repeatedly. Not only did he say these things directly, but he would also send me messages on my phone during his work hours, saying things like, I hope you're not eating an expensive lunch, don't go shopping without permission, and just stay quiet at home. I couldn't accept these words at all. In the end, Darren didn't allow me to work part-time. So, I had no choice but to make ends meet with the bare minimum living expenses he provided each month. In addition to the abuse from him, I gradually felt concerned as my life became increasingly difficult. Amidst this life, I received a call from Andrea, my best friend from vocational school. We used to meet frequently and have meals or go shopping before I got married, but we hadn't seen each other in a while. She laughed happily on the other end of the phone, saying, It's been a long time! I wanted to hear your voice! Hearing my best friend's voice for the first time in a while, I couldn't help but cry. I tried to keep the phone away from my face so she wouldn't notice, but she seemed to see right through me. Nancy, are you crying? What happened? I'll listen if you want to talk. Taking her up on her offer, I told her in detail about my current life. She quietly listened to my disjointed story without interruption. I didn't know Darren was like that. He seemed like such a nice person. I didn't notice at your wedding. I hadn't noticed either, and we have been together for a long time. It was only natural that she didn't notice after meeting him just once. Then she cleared her throat over the phone and said, I started a company, you know. Well, it's still small with only two employees. Really? Congratulations! You've always wanted to start a company since we were students. Thank you. I have a favor to ask you. Can you work as a fashion designer for my company? You can work from home. It was an unexpected and delightful invitation. But it's been quite some time since I graduated from vocational school and I don't have the confidence to create good designs for work. Moreover, my husband has strictly forbidden me to work. I shared my honest feelings with her. What are you talking about? 
You graduated at the top of your class in design and won awards numerous times. Besides, it'll be fine if you keep it a secret from your husband. Just think of it as helping me out. Please. After much deliberation, I eventually gave in to her enthusiasm and agreed to help her with her work. To be honest, I was drawn to the idea of being able to work in fashion design again, so I decided to help her. However, I knew that if I told my husband I was going to work, he would definitely get angry. I decided to keep this a secret from him for the time being until I could come up with a good explanation. After that, I began working from home as a fashion designer only during the hours Darren was at work. There were some struggles at first because I was away from it for so long, but designing clothes was still enjoyable. I diligently worked through trial and error, and before I knew it, half a year had passed. I realized I was earning enough to be independent without relying on my husband's income. Of course, that was thanks to Andrea. She had promoted and introduced work to me, an unknown designer, which allowed me to earn this income. That's when I suddenly thought, is there any meaning to being married to Darren? The abuse continued even after I secretly started working in fashion design, and some months our living expenses were barely enough, if not in deficit. If I were unemployed, without a place to go, and without savings, I would have to rely on him, but now there's no need for that. Wouldn't it be better not to have a husband who lacks empathy and does nothing but insult me? That's it. I'll get a divorce. It felt so natural that I wondered why I hadn't thought of it before. It was as if my vision had suddenly cleared. While my resolve was still unwavering, I called Andrea to declare my decision. Andrea, I'm going to divorce Darren. I've decided to become independent. Finally, you've come to your senses. It's definitely better that way. I'll help you, so don't hesitate to ask if there's anything I can do. With her encouraging words in my heart, I promptly presented Darren with a completed divorce paper that very night. He sprang up from the living room sofa where he had been lying down without even changing his clothes after coming home from work. I placed the divorce papers on the table in front of the sofa. He snatched them up and looked at them closely before throwing them down roughly. What's this? Don't be stupid and talk about divorce. You should be serving me as a housewife for the rest of your life. It suits you perfectly. Besides, how will you live after the divorce? Where will you live? What about clothes? Food? You don't have the money to make it on your own after the divorce, do you? I can't live with you anymore. I became a housewife at your request, but I can't stand being insulted and ordered around. And don't worry about the money. Take a look at this. I shoved something in front of his eyes. N Nancy, why do you have so much savings? Were you working behind my back? His eyes widened as he looked at the bank book I presented. Yes, these are the earnings from the designs I created and sold. I used this to supplement our living expenses when there weren't enough. Are you grateful? As I said this, Darren, who had been sitting on the sofa, rose abruptly. He seemed about to insult me again, but instead he drew a deep breath and smiled smugly. On second thought, you can work. If you want to work so badly, you can be the one to earn the money now. I'll become a stay-at-home husband. His intentions were obvious. He was trying to exploit me to the fullest and control me as he pleased. But that's not going to happen anymore. He can barely operate a washing machine, let alone become a house husband. I wish he'd save his nonsense for when he was dreaming. You coward! 
I won't let you have your way anymore. Fine. Just hurry up and divorce me. I picked up the divorce paper he had thrown earlier and slammed them back onto the table. Perhaps he didn't expect me to take such a hostile attitude and he shuddered, his shoulders trembling as he muttered weakly, Why? I quickly packed my things and left the house. Thankfully, Andrea let me stay at her place for the time being. At first, Darren, who had been served with divorce papers, grumbled. I don't want a divorce. I was deceived. But my daily journals, household account books, and screenshots of the abusive messages he had sent sealed the deal, and the divorce went through smoothly. The lawyer I had consulted for the divorce was someone Andrea had helped me find. Thanks to her, I was able to find a very skilled attorney. I really couldn't thank her enough for all she had done for me. When I told her this, she laughed heartily and said, Don't worry about it. We're best friends. But if you really want to repay me, you can do it through your designs. About half a month later, I found a new place to live. Thanks to her aggressive sales efforts, I was able to greatly increase my opportunities as a fashion designer. Of course, I still have a lot to learn and little experience in taking on jobs, but I'm sure my future is bright. And from what I've heard, Darren's life after the divorce has been miserable. First of all, with me gone, there was no one to do the housework, and the room we used to live in quickly turned into a garbage-filled mess. On top of that, he had no habit of properly managing his suits, so his appearance became sloppy, and he started receiving harsh complaints from clients, saying, Don't send such a dirty person for sales. Furthermore, the complaint issues spread within the company, and his colleagues and subordinates began to distance themselves from him. He was eventually transferred from the sales department to warehouse management. Unable to bear it, he ultimately resigned voluntarily. Without any income and unable to manage his money properly, he quickly found himself in debt and was evicted from his apartment. He is now said to be struggling even to find food for the day. In fact, there was one time when he barged into Andrea's company. I was working from home at the time, so I wasn't there. When she spotted Darren walking around yelling trying to find me, she used her expert judo skills to throw him off. She then promptly reported him to the police and he was taken away quietly. I was surprised when I heard about it later and I worried whether Andrea would be targeted for revenge. But at the same time, I felt relieved. She seemed to feel the same way, saying with a mischievous expression, it was a little scary, but I finally feel refreshed. After all, I have to make sure he pays for all the suffering you went through, right? I may have failed in my marriage, but I was able to gain something much more precious. I vowed in my heart to cherish the time I have now working with my beloved best friend on the job I love.